Um, the point of this discussion, we did talk last year, um, Tyler actually came and talked when we're starting with this uh, repeat findings and uh, corrective action plans, and those were starting, we're implementing those, we're fa we have phased those in, so the starting of this year, um, we are starting to um, implement that. Some of you have actually had to do corrective action plans, um, and so that's what we are going to discuss today, just to get some of that information out to you. Um, and then... Um, Part of this, which you just, you know, I'm the one that raised my hand, you can never get away from internal controls and I'm going to work it in every chance I get. So there's going to be some information in here on internal controls that I'm trying to slip into you when you're not looking, but I'm giving you a heads up from the beginning. And I don't know why this isn't coming in for me. Okay, so, um, and... Dean kind of alluded to this early this morning. When we come out to do an audit, um, one of the things we're doing is providing uh, an opinion on whether we believe your financial, uh, financial statements are materially correct and fairly represent the financial position of the county. That's part of our audit opinion that comes at the very beginning of your report. Um, that's something that we were not originally designed to do, but we've picked up over the years, and it's become more of a focal point than even the compliance auditing, which we will be getting back to as we get caught up again. Um, the financial statements that we're auditing, we, we use your annual financial report. We run a macro on those and put it in the format that you see in those reports, um, but that's what we're putting an opinion on. Um, in the same manner, when you do your grant schedule, I don't know, it's still not there. Um, If I relaunch it, okay. Hey, it worked. Okay. So, in the same manner, we take the, what the information you put in your grant schedule on the annual financial report, and we convert that into the schedule of expenditures of federal. Of, a schedule of federal expenditures or the CEFA report, um, which if you are a federal county, you know about that. But in addition to the opinion that we put on the financial statements, we also audit for compliance. And again, we have not been doing as heavy on that in the last couple of years, but we are um, going to start doing that again. So um, we're going to pick up more compliance auditing. Um, but if something is reported to us, if someone calls in and says, I think this is wrong, if you call in and say, I'd like you to look at this, I think this is an issue, if uh, when the, the audit team comes in and they talk to you in the very beginning during the entrance and ask you if there's anything you have specific, specific concerns about, all of those things are usually compliance related and we will look at those. Um, and if we... If we find something that is in not in compliance, then you have a finding. So you can have a federal finding if you are not in compliance with your federal grant, and we're not going to talk about that today. You, you, we, you know about that, but we are talking about non-compliance with state law, with uniform compliance guidelines, with your local policies, your local ordinances. Um, those are the things we're looking at when we're talking about compliance, and those are what we're talking about when there is a finding. In the internal control manual and in the webinar that you all looked at um, on internal controls, it talks about the objectives. The reason that you have internal controls is so that you can reach your objectives. Um, it classified those objectives as operations, financial reporting, and compliance with laws and regulations, which we just talked about briefly. Obviously, the operations of the county come from really come from the most efficient use of your resources to provide the best services to your to your taxpayers. Um, inherent in that is the need to safeguard, not to waste the money, and one way to waste it is to lose it or have it stolen, so the safeguard of your assets is part of that objective. The other two objectives include preparing an accurate financial report and grant schedule, which is part of your annual financial report, and then again, compliance that we just talked about. So when you're looking at the findings, keep that in the back of your mind that these are the objectives you're trying to achieve. Okay. 
It's possible that your finding will state that there is a deficiency in your internal controls over a particular process within your financial reporting and accounting transactions. It's also possible to have a finding of noncompliance. The law says do this, you didn't do this, so we're reporting that as a finding. Um, and again, that can be a law, it can be a uniform compliance guideline, it can be a local ordinance, it can be a local policy that your county has. And finally, it's possible that the finding will have both internal control and noncompliance written into the same finding. When I'm talking about uniform compliance in this, I'm not talking about the federal um, guidelines. I'm talking about the, the accounting and uniform compliance guidelines that the State Board of Accounts issues. This is your manuals, the bulletins, the state examiner directives. Those are all what I'm talking about with uniform compliance guidelines. If you get a deficiency in your internal controls, that means when we're looking at that, at your overall system, we're seeing problems where something could happen and you would not either detect and prevent it or detect it and correct it in time. And so we are pointing out that there is a deficiency in the controls over um, that particular transaction. If that deficiency is significant, and they can be small and they can be large, if the deficiency is significant, it's going to result in a finding. And we are required to report that deficiency by auditing standards to your governing boards. Okay. We do not audit your internal controls as a whole and place an opinion on your internal controls. That's not something that we do. It is, th those kind of audits can be done, but we do not do them in the state of Indiana right now. So we're only noting a deficiency when we find an, a particular issue during the audit that we want to point out. So it might only be on receiving. It might be how you're handling payroll, but it's not on your system as a whole. And then if we do find noncompliance, there has got to be a specific thing we are finding that you are not compliant with. So there has got to be a statute. There has got to be a uniform compliance guideline with the manual or bulletins or the directives. There's got to be a policy we can point to. Your policy says this is what you're supposed to do with travel and you didn't follow it. There's always going to be a specific criteria. So make sure you understand that point that you should be able to understand what's wrong. So we have had complaints or had people feedback in the past where they'll say, well, I get done with my exit and I don't understand what I did wrong. So you should always understand what that finding is. So if, if the first step is to make sure that your field examiner that's out giving you that finding is explaining to you in a sufficient detail, giving you the specific criteria, making sure you understand what's going wrong. If you still are not connecting at whatever, Call Stephanie and I, that's the next level. Call us and say, I got this finding and I don't understand it. We'll be glad to discuss it with you. But make sure that you understand what the problem is because if you don't understand the problem, you can't correct it. You can't even tell whether you agree with it or not if you don't understand it. So it's very, very important that you understand what the issue is. Okay, as I said, many of your noncompliant non-compliance findings have internal control issues associated with them, even if they don't always write them in the finding. It is possible to have a deficiency in your internal controls and not have any non-compliance. It's very hard to have non-compliance without a deficiency in the internal control. So an example would be um, taking something just really outlandish. If somebody comes in um, to make a payment to you and they give you $100 in cash and you lay it on your counter, that is not good internal controls. You leave it there all day. There is a chance, especially in some of these counties, it'll still be there at the end of the day. So the money is not missing. There's no noncompliance. But that's not a good internal control. On the reverse side, when we find out that money isn't getting deposited timely, um, and that is noncompliance, there's probably some controls you need to look at to make sure that that happens. Does that make sense? OK. And so, um, sometimes I write too much. I don't even like what I write. Okay. 
As another example, um, what we um, are um, focusing on is, is unintentional. I mean, if you leave the money on your counter, I guess you really are kind of asking for it to be stolen. But a lot of things are not that outlandish or not that obvious. So we set those in controls, in controls in place to ensure that you achieve those objectives. So that same example in, an, in another format, you could have the best, super efficient employee that ever walked the face of this earth working for you. You could have absolutely no controls, but that person is making sure that everything gets done when it's supposed to get done. So we could find in that situation that you, you do not have sufficient internal controls, but there's no non-compliance because super efficient employee is making sure everything gets done. That will work for the short term, but as all of you, everyone in this room has realized, that super efficient employee can get sick or go on vacation. They're going to get sick because they're working too much and having to take care of too much. They're going to go on vacation because they need a break from that. Or they're going to find another job because they're super efficient and there's more jobs out there that are going to pay them more. So you cannot rely on that employee. You need to have in controls in place so that when you hire the next employee to take that place. They know what's expected of them. They have things to follow. You can't just expect them to absorb that um, through the air somehow. And again, when we find either an internal control deficiency or noncompliance, your field examiner is going to be evaluating the level of that in the past Pretty much, if we found something wrong, we wrote it up. So uh, we went out to do uh, you know, a, a five-year audit on a very small unit, and they didn't have board minutes for three months out of the 36. They got a finding. But in the grand scheme of things, that's probably not all that important. They need to know about it. But it, you know, anything could have happened those, those two or three months. So, we are no longer writing all of those automatically up. We have levels, so they're going to look at it, and it's going to be unique to your office or whatever office they're doing. It's, there's no, no hard and fast rules. It's always going to be this way or that way, because they're going to look at why did it happen, how prevalent was it, how significant was it, um, how impactful was it to, you, to your office as a whole. If they find a very small, you know, a trivial kind of matter that they, they might have written up in the past, but they just want you to know, they look at you, um, they're doing an office and they're looking at deposits and maybe three of them were more than a day late. But the rest of them were all on time. They're going to tell you what verbally. They're going to discuss it with you as an office holder and it's not going any further. It's going to be a, a verbal comment. If it's a matter of internal controls that is more significant or a compliance that may be more impactful, that they feel not only does the office holder need to know, but the governing boards, so in your case, the council or the commissioners need to know, but they don't think it's significant enough to be reportable. Again, it can be fixed. It may not be, it needs to be addressed, but it doesn't need to be in a public report. They're going to do what we call now a management letter that letter goes to you, it goes to the governing boards, but it is not a public document. It's not published on our website. A lot of times internal controls are those because we don't really want to publish what is wrong with your internal controls. We just want to point them out to you so you can take corrective action. However, if the, if the, the finding is significant and impactful, it's going to end up in a, in a report. It's a, it, what we call ARCs, audit result and comment. It's going to end up in your report. So no matter what level it is, whether it's a verbal comment or it's an ARC, we want you to take it as, as important, take it into your consideration. So even for a small and insignificant, if there was something that you can tweak a little bit and prevent that in the future, we want you to go ahead and do that. If it's the level of a management letter, then we want you to spend a little more time and energy on that and make sure that that gets corrected before it becomes a bigger issue. And then if it is a finding in your um, audit report, you, you have to take some sort of action on that to correct it, if it's, if it's that significant. Okay. 
The reason we're going through all of this, the reason that the statute was changed, and by, that, by the way, it wasn't our decision to change that because this is a lot more work for us as well. Um, but the whole point is to resolve these. Um, and hopefully none of you, but you're probably aware there are some reports where the same thing is, is reported year after year after year and nothing ever changes. And that's what they're wanting to stop, that, that some action is taken um, one way or another so that that is resolved. So resolution is what is, is key for us. And that goes right back to what I was talking about understanding the problem. You cannot solve it if you don't know what's wrong. So if it doesn't make sense to you, make sure you talk to your FE about it. Make sure you talk to Stephanie or I about it if you have additional questions. Because we want to get to a resolution that's going to work. So the code now, and I've got the site there, 5-11-5-1.5 uh, says that if there is a finding in your report, so this is not the management letter of verbal, but in the report itself, you will take corrective action. So that's law. If we come back in a subsequent audit, and we find essentially the same problem or the exact same problem, that is a repeat finding. That means it's, it's a finding in two reports. The statute says not only will you take uh, corrective action, you're going to write out what your corrective action plan is, and you're going to file it with the State Board of Accounts for us to review. Okay. This is different, and, and Tyler talked about this last year, if you are a federal audit and you have a federal finding, you have to write a corrective action plan for your federal finding that becomes part of the report. Um, this, this is different. You can use the same if you want to, but the corrective action plan that you're filing with us for a comment in your report is a little more involved, it's a lot more involved, um, and it does take more time. So um, depending on what the situation is, you may want to do them separately. For each repeat finding, and those repeat findings will be identified to you, so you don't have to guess. You know, you know, they'll say, this is a repeat finding from last year, and they'll give you a list of them. You have to have a corrective action plan for each finding that pertains to your office. So if there were three, then you would need three corrective action plans. So at the exit, what the field examiner will give you will be a form that will list all of the repeat findings that you have to have correction act active plans for. You need to contact our office within 10 days either to upload your corrective action plan or to ask for more time if you need more time to make, come up with the plan. And we'll go over those procedures in a little bit. If you disagree with the finding, and that is always possible, number one, Anything that in, in any finding in your report, you still have, and this does, the corrective action plan does not change this at all, you still have the right to uh, an official response that will become part of the report. The corrective action plan is not, but you still can write an official response that is part of the report. This is not changed on that. But your corrective action plan, if you, if you understand, fully understand the problem and you do not agree that it's a problem, you can, you can say, I don't agree with this. What will happen, and again, Tyler kind of addressed that, is if, if you do not take corrective action, file a corrective action plan because you don't agree with it, um, it goes before the audit committee. So the audit committee may ask you to explain to them why you don't agree with it or why you don't think it's an issue. They may change legislation. They may decide, well, maybe that was a badly written law and we need to change that. There are, there are different things that come out of this. It's really your chance to explain your side of it at that point. Um, but that is always an option if you want to. Um, and we can discuss that at any time that you want to, too. But if you disagree with the, with the finding, you do have the option to say, I don't think it's wrong and I'm not going to correct it. You will have to defend it later, but you can do that. 
if you do file the corrective action plan, and again, you have, let me put that one in there. So you do have the 10 days to respond or to ask for more time if you need it. You have six months to implement the plan. So if your corrective action plan is that you need to, to um, change your internal controls, you've got six months to write whatever it is your, your changes are going to be, get trained on it, and get those, get those implemented. And we will be following up on that, both on, your, on your, the receipt of your corrective action plan, approval of it, and then follow up on the implementation. Um, that may be something you can send to Stephanie or I at the office to show what you've done. Maybe we'll send um, the FE back in for, you know, back into to your office just to check on it, just to look at what you've done um, and make sure if, it's, if it relates to records or it's going to involve more than what you can just upload or send to us. You, um, if you need more time than six months, if it's a problem that you've had, you know, you've been working on for several years and it, it's not going to be resolved in six months, you can ask for more time on that as well. As I said, the first step in, in developing this corrective, even to see whether or not you agree with it, but to develop this corrective action plan is to fully understand the issue. The second, what's the problem? And then the second step is, why did this happen? Um, we call um, a lot of the literature going out is determining the root cause of the problem. And I'm, to go through the, the process of this, it's it, the one of the processes you can use is by asking the why. Um, and it sounds very trivial, but it really is a, a very powerful tool to get your mind working on this. When I first heard about this and read about this, um, why, it, it, it really reminded me of talking to my four-year-old grandson, because he will ask me why until you're ready to pull your hair out. And since I'm not his mother, I'm his grandmother, I can't say, because I told you so. So I keep talking till we get to an answer that satisfies him. And that's not what I'm talking about here, but the process itself is digging down until you are satisfied with what is the root cause of that. Follow some of the same pathways. So for an example, um, let's say that the issue is a bank reconcilement is not done. I know that's not the best one for, for you guys because you do bank reconcilements, but it's a common problem. It's a common comment. So a bank reconcilement is not done. So you ask yourself, why was it not done? And so the first smart aleck reminds us, nobody did it. OK, we're not going to stop there. We're going to go, why didn't anyone do it? Well, maybe no one was assigned to do it. Maybe super efficient employee took a vacation that month and didn't tell anyone else to do it, and no one else realized it needed to be done. Why didn't anyone else need to know it needed to be done? because there aren't any procedures in place in writing anywhere in the office or a checklist or anything that says each month this bank and reconcilement will be done, it will be reviewed, and it will be okayed by the office holder or whatever controls are in place. That's when you're getting to the root cause. So you cannot, what we do not want to see in a corrective action plan is problem, bank reconcilement done, solution, we'll do it because that's not getting to the root cause. You have to understand what the problem is and what is going to change to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Okay. So once you've gotten to that root cause, you can start working on the corrective action plan because you know what the root problem is, whether it's a lack of procedures, whether it's a lack of understanding. Maybe it was an issue where you just didn't understand that that was in the statute. Um, and again, it's not enough to say, now I know it, but how are you going to then take steps in the future to make sure that you understand what needs to be done or, or how this is being overlooked? Um, and it, 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 there, there's a lot of it. It's very hard to be specific without a specific problem, but that's what we're looking at. What actually happened? What went wrong? What can fix that problem? And for us, for the repeat finding, for example, with the, with the bank reconcilement, 
it is very, very possible that you could say, OK, we didn't have any procedures to do it. So you write up procedures. You now have internal controls in place to do that bank reconcilement. And the next year, there might be a month that it doesn't get done because someone overrode those controls. That's a different problem. That is not a repeat finding because you addressed the original problem. So it doesn't mean that it's a magic cure that you will, you know, once you do your corrective action plan, you will never have anything close to that again. It just means you've addressed the problem that, uh, that caused that original problem, and you've, you've made steps to make sure it does not happen again. Something similar might happen, but not that problem. Okay, there is a template on our website um, when you go into it, there's actually a template you can look at in, in kind of word form, but, but you actually load it on. There's a, a link that will open it up and allow you to fill this information in. You will get a copy of this template in your exit if you have a repeat finding. If you don't, you're not going to get it. But if you have a repeat finding, they will give you this, this template. Um, and so if you want to work with the template and fill all of that out before you go, that's what I would do because I'm terrible with technology. Um, the first part of it is going to ask you for the report period, which is your audit period, and that should be on the documents you get from your field examiner. It's going to ask you with a contact person and information. More than likely, it's going to be you. Um, but if you're someone else is taking responsibility in the office, you can designate that, put their name and phone number there. Clearly state the issue. What is the problem? And it can't be I don't like State Board of Accounts, because that may be true, <laughs> but it's not going to solve any problems. List the requirements that were not followed, and this should be on the comment itself. What criteria was not met, whether it was a statute, a uniform compliance guideline, or um, a policy? Make sure you list what it was. Then your view. Do you agree with it or disagree? And you can say, yes, I, th I realize this is wrong, and we're going to fix it, or I don't think this is wrong. Identify that root cause. Make sure you put in the detail what you ultimately determined to be the problem, the root cause of the problem. And then what corrective action you're going to take to implement that. I will be writing internal controls that will address how receipts are supposed to be handled in my office. I will be training. I mean, you know, you just go through the steps that you're going to do. And some sort of implementation timeline. It's going to take me, this is, you know, we're not going to hold you to the wall on this, but it's going to take me four to six weeks to write these internal controls and another, another month to get them trained. So it sh we should be fully implemented in three months. Something that gives us some, because we're getting back with you, and we don't want to get back with you every single day when it's, you know, you've got six weeks to work on this. So give us something to go on so that we can follow up with you. And be sure you focus on the root cause, as we've talked about. Okay. Um, once the report comes in, it's given to Stephanie and I. We will go over it. If we have any questions, we'll contact you directly. Make sure that we get it uh, kind of up in the form <laughs> that we're going to want. So we may do some back and forth on it. But you're not alone in this. We will help you with it as much as possible. Can't write it for you, but we can brainstorm with you. We can give you suggestions. Um, once it's approved, then it goes um, in a tracking so that we will be following up on when we should get back to you on it. Um, when you have fully implemented it, you are should send us an email that you've got it ready to go and you're ready to have us review what's being done. Um, so be sure and. Um, Keep us surprised of that. Also, if you need more time, let us know. It's, it's taking longer than you thought. When you need more time, give us a time frame of how much more time it'll need. Oh, I'm not keeping up on this, am I?